Hey y'all, Hunter Elliott, RanchOut.com. This afternoon I want to talk to you about a relatively new model from Dan Wesson. This is the Discretion. This pistol is chambered in 45 automatic, but it is also available in 9mm. First thing I do want to show you though is there is no magazine in the gun. Slide is locked to the rear. Chamber is clear, so she is safe to talk about. As always, there is going to be an article on RangeShot.com, and it's going to have all the technical specifications about this pistol, as well as the specific rounds that we shot through it, and how it grouped out at 25 yards from a rest. But suffice to say, it was no problem keeping the inch and a half, two inch groups out at 25 yards with this pistol. So right here at the rear, we've got a really nice checkered mainspring housing. It does run a magwell, and it acts as a funnel. So when you go to get that reload, that magwell is just kind of helping you funnel the magazine in there. The drawback to a magwell is, you can see here, when I lock that in, it's barely just over flush with this magwell. If you run a standard type magazine, when it locks in, the base plate is below that. Now we did run it with all kind of different magazines. The, you know, what Dan Wesson supplied, the two eight rounders, as well as some Wilson Combats, Checkmate seven, eight round magazines and all that. Moving up to the beaver tail grip safety, incorporated palm swell. And that palm swell, as you know, is just added insurance. So when you grasp this pistol, you makes for sure that you're disengaging that grip safety. The hammer is a speed skeletonized hammer. Rear sight, it is nicely serrated on the rear. And that, all that's really for is to keep any kind of glare from sheening off that sight, as well as all the way down the top of the slide is serrated for the same reason. Take note of the ledge on this rear sight. And what that basically will allow you to do is uh, rack the slide one-handed by either hanging it on your belt, your shoe, or like a table ledge. The tall silencer sights, it's a straight eight design, the rear, night sight illuminates kind of a, a off-white yellow color while the front sight is white so in the dark the front and rear dots contrast really nicely to each other this rear sight is adjustable for windage with a little set screw and a, you can punch it whatever way you wanted to do i pulled the gun out from the box we shot it out at 25 yards with no adjustments and it was right on with that added real estate they are a little quicker to acquire once you kind of get used to it now since they are tall though understand that you're going to have a little bit a different point of aim point of impact so something that you would want to do is go out to the range and shoot this gun a little bit and become familiar with it before you'd want to press it in any kind of service and when you add a silencer to it your point of aim point of impact could also shift a little bit it's finding a quality 1911 today with a threaded barrel it's kind of tough so yeah to me that's a really good nice feature on the gun now you will notice the slide here is relieved a little bit and it is not ported but basically what dan wesson did is remove a little bit of mass from the front of the slide kind of help take up some of that weight when you do thread the silencer on the end of it and it also it looks pretty groovy moving out here to the trigger it does have a nice skeletonized aluminum trigger not quite a flat trigger but pretty close and the trigger broke nice and clean with just a little bit of take up four and a half pounds of pressure and just just a cat hair over travels the way they skeletonized it though it looks a little funky maybe not my favorite pattern but that's really neither here nor there. It does have an incorporated accessory rail coming down here to the front strap. It is also nicely checkered. And then you've got these G10 stocks. They do have Allen head stock screws on them. And uh, if it were me, I would prefer to see some flat headed stock screws because I'm a little bit more of a traditionalist. But looking at this pistol, though it is a 1911 government style gun, it definitely is not traditional. The magazine catch is well serrated. The slide stop here is kind of a minimalistic slide stop. It does have a pretty good ledge on it that's serrated, but the slide stop pin coming out the other side is flush with the receiver. Now, I don't know that I love that because, well, it makes it a little bit harder to field strip. But I know why they did it, because if you wanted to add some laser grips or whatever, and you've got that laser right here at the top of the stock, when you in cut that laser on if you've got that slide stop sticking out it will kind of disrupt that laser it is extended thumb safety that's serrated and disengages engages with with an audible click and just a little bit of force in order to engage that thumb safety and i feel like that's pretty good so you don't inadvertently sweep that safety off okay y'all so we got it all detail stripped and all the little bits and pieces of the gun so the mainspring housing and magwell are incorporated the cool thing that i just learned though while taking the stocks off is the stock screws have little o-rings right at the head and basically what that does is when you snug them down that actually almost acts like a lock washer and keeps those stock screws nice and tight that is a very nice touch dan wesson is still running a reduced radius firing pin stop and as we all know all that's going to do is help you mitigate a little bit of recoil 
If you've got any questions about how that works, my buddy John Travis, 1911 tuner, he wrote us an article on Range Hot about the reduced radius firing pin stop. Dan Weston does ship the gun with a barrel bushing wrench. The barrel bushing was not tight enough to where I really needed to get off. I was able to get it off without that, but it is very well fit. They're still not kinking the plunger spring. So uh, when you take that thumb safety off, that plunger spring, man, it tries to, it tries to get the hell out of Dodge. So uh, if anybody in Dan Weston's watching this, Hey man, how about kink these plunger springs a little bit? Cause I am tired of looking in my carpet for them. Or maybe I should just learn how to take it apart a little better. The sear, disconnect, both look really well. The barrel is a fully ramped barrel. And with the added threads, it is five and three quarters. So you do get three quarters of an inch more barrel length, which will net you a little bit more velocity. How much? Probably not a whole lot. Is it enough to matter? Well, in this world, man every little bit helps now looking at the lock and lugs on this barrel they are nice and crisp and clean with no indication of any kind of chippage or, or, or peening same with the mating lugs inside the slide they're still nice and crisp edges and what that leads me to believe is the barrel is fit correctly there's no issues with barrel fit or timing on that gun i know 600 rounds and a whole lot of rounds to put down range but let me tell you something if there was something majorly wrong with this gun it would certainly be showing up. Now, looking at the slide here, this gun does not use any kind of firing pin safety. Thankfully, they've stayed away from a full length guide rod. They're just using an uh, all steel GI length guide rod. MSRP on this gun is 2142. <whistles> that is a lot of money for a 1911. These guns are all hand fitted and put together by Dan Weston. So all these small parts, Dan Weston is not skimping on the material. These are all machine steel parts zero malfunctions with and without a silencer we run a lot of rounds down range using this liberty suppressors cosmic this is something that i could see somebody using for home defense or even maybe duty carry or concealed carry if you could dress around it anything that i might have to rely on to save my bacon well that's not where i want to skimp i'm gonna buy cheap paper tiles and i'm gonna buy cheap light bulbs and all that stuff because because that's irrelevant but something like this that may have to save my life or somebody, friends or family, that's not really where I want to skimp my dollars, if that makes any sense. So understand it, you know, like my buddy always says, buy once, cry once. Hey guys, what's going on? This afternoon, I'm with uh, two of my good friends, Derek, Rick. They've been helping me out for a while on reviews. We've been spending a day shooting. Both of y'all run a couple mags through discretion. What are your thoughts? I love it. Great grip, shoots well. Did you rehearse that? Mm -hmm. Are you reading a cue card? I love uh, it. Great grip. Shoots well. Shoots well. I like the color. Uh, I like I like the action. It's very smooth. Uh, the trigger, just classic Dan Wesson, just beautiful. And uh, I, I like the, the non-traditional look of it as well. So I've spent the afternoon out here with my buddy Andrew Barnes, Barnes Precision Machine out of Apex, North Carolina. He is a machinist and builds a really fine high-end AR-15 rifle as well as a competitive shooter. So I brought the Dan West and Discretion out here to his place and uh, he ran a few mags through it. And what are your thoughts, brother? I thought the quality was good. It's got a nice trigger. We shot a couple of pistols today. I'd say this is definitely at the top of the list as far as the level of a competition shooter that would look for a really, really good trigger and some good accuracy, a tight slide, those kind of things. Um, the addition of the suppressor did help with keeping the muzzle down. It was a lot of fun to shoot very well manufactured and and again, it had a great trigger, which is one of the first things I think someone with for a precision or accuracy pistol is going to pay attention to. If you got any questions that I didn't cover here, check the article. If you still don't answer your questions, let me know. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. I always appreciate feedback, good and bad, because all I'm going to do is continue to make it better. And then that's going to you know, give people a little bit more incentive to come by and check us out. So anyway, in the end... That's what it's all about. Look, guys, take care of yourselves and each other, and I look forward to seeing you at the range.